Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Eden Zero Season 2, Episode Number 6 Reaction. Alright, so the previous episode, um, yeah, uh, something crazy happened. That is, uh, the whole situation turned more and more worse. And uh, it it seemed like, like by the end of it, everyone was captured, you know, Homura was captured. Um, Weiss is almost like dying, bleeding out, you know, like Drakenjo cut off his hand and all. And then, uh, you know, Shiki was also captured, Rebecca's obviously captured, Shiki uh, tried to stand up to the whole situation, but then Drakenjo just shot him. So, yeah, now I'm wondering what's going to happen. Like, it seems like there might be, like, like this is something that Drakenjo is deliberately doing to, I don't know, like, probably bring out Rebecca's power. Or something I'm not exactly sure what he's planning but letting Rebecca sit there and watch everything happen kind of makes me feel that's what he's trying to do and so the only way I can see this the situation getting resolved if Re Rebecca's power has something to do with time skipping or time like you know like stopping or time reverting back then that can help or Maybe this is like a whole nightmare that's going on because Xiaomi kind of mentioned something about maybe this is a nightmare, something like that. So either like you know this or that is the only way I can see this getting resolved. But let's see, let's see how this goes. Uh, if Rebecca unlocks her power or what what happens after now that uh, Shiki is dead. All right, uh, let's begin episode number six. So I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it whichever is your preference, and let's get started. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Sibyl is also dead. Oh, the junk shop. Uh, Happy and Pino. Seven days. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh. they're showing her legs so obviously uh yeah i can i can guess what's going to happen here onwards i don't know this one is very unpredictable so i you know like maybe maybe something else will happen what i'm thinking is like i said her power will probably bring shiki back let's see Okay, here we go. Our future. Alright, here we go. What now? Laguna is here. Oh, God. Yeah, like Draken. He's just... Mm. 
well yeah give it oh my god i feel like slapping this guy now how dare you what 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 the hell are you saying wrong foot like he's the most empathetic one but i i, I cannot really accept what he's saying here man Yeah, well, thank you so much for... <laughs> wow. Ugh. Yeah, like I said, he's the most empathetic one out of everyone. But still. Oh boy. Oh wait. I see. <laughs> well, it's not only speed. There you go. It's time. Time manipulation. Oh. Gat leap. Cat? Is Schrodinger's cat? Is that what's... The only cat related to space is Schrodinger's cat? <laughs> Probably, unless and until you realize it, you cannot extract it. Yeah. Oh no, they said there's no camera in the bathroom. I... Can't she just go to the bathroom and... Man, shut the hell up. I, I hate this guy. Like, she get told about making him his friend or whatever. I don't like that. I want to... Oh, interesting. <sighs> and chicken. Oh, whoa. What the oh, so they have a Okay, I was wondering, they're not really monitoring her in the, in the bathroom, but... Okay, okay, what now? Okay. There you go, so he, she can stop time? Why is it called cat leap by them? I think it had something to do with shredding a cat or something. What the? Okay, it must... I don't know. Oh my god, thank god! Alright, it's a... It's a time leaping ability or something. Oh, this is... This is the... Before everything happened. All right, we need to change the outcome this time.
Oh no, this is giving me Steins Gate vibes. Hopefully she doesn't have to go through this multiple times. Wait, so she now knows how to use her ether gear, is it? It's not a dream! Oh no. No! Oh my god, she needs to realize. She'll have to go through this at least two or three times for her to understand this is not a dream. Oh no. Okay, I feel like she'll understand if everything starts happening the, like the way she saw. She can probably... There you go. There you go. Hopefully she realizes. She she. Oh, that's still at the launch deck. Quick. Stop them. Okay, thank God she's actually taking some steps. All right, stop Shiki. <laughs> okay. Okay. But how do we change this whole thing? Dragon just not gonna leave us alone. We need to take care of him. Okay, please listen to her and take her seriously. One thing I think we can do is like hopefully stop the Eden Zero from getting hacked by those two, like you know that that slime alien thing and and the AI. Come on, all right. Okay, one thing is good is that the past is not repeating. The past, the future has been changed. Because now Rebecca's with us. Oh. Yeah, but... There you go. There you go, thank you, Hermit. Catch sleep. Moscow's <laughs> Okay. All right. Hmm. All right. Well, yeah, and you're going to die in the future. Self chronophage. Oh my god. Self chronophage. Yeah, this is for only hers, her. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and everything is just the same. Not future, like, I'm sure she went through that. But she lived back to another time. Ah, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, obviously. So this is just a parallel world. Like, obviously, it's not the same world that she... 
Intruders. They'll be intruding. Oh yeah, that as well. I forgot about it completely. So is she still not captured? Oh my god. Oh there you go, she has been already captured. What the oh this is couch bro or oh, this girl <laughs> Wow <laughs> Well there you go Okay Wait! I feel like we need to get ready for the people that will intrude. Oh really? What? Another thing we need to keep in mind, we shouldn't let Draken realize that we know that Rebecca knows that she has her power. She, she unlocked her power. We shouldn't let Draken of this world know that. Yeah, we know everything that's going to happen from here onwards. Yeah, that is true as well, you know. Alright, don't get too cocky. Yeah, I understand, but still. Okay, here we go. First thing, we, there you go. I was just talking about this. We need to take care of this first. We need to stop that AI, that, that skeleton AI, whatever. Let's take care of them quickly and just throw them out. Just throw them out. Everything's happening the same. No! <laughs> okay. The main problematic one is the skeleton. Okay. All right, skeleton, take care of the skeleton. <laughs> Damn, steel sorcerers. Okay, yeah. Okay, don't tell that in front of them. Okay, but I guess they're unconscious. Yes. Oh wait, they're conscious. Yes. And that guy's an AI. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, but the future has changed from here onwards. Like, we don't know what's going to happen. Okay. Okay. Another thing. Sylph might be coming because he was she was already on the way.
The guild master Noah, I think that was his name. Yeah, we need to take care of this guy as well. Yeah, nobody knows that. And the four elements. Yes. Hmm. And so it is coming towards our direction currently. Oh, Jin, yeah, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah. Can you use overdrive? <laughs> oh yeah, true. <laughs> what? That's impossible. Everyone has a weakness. Sister, her sister is her his weakness if you think about it. And Sylph is coming in our direction. Let, let's capture her. Oh, okay. Th okay, that's also a good way. Yeah, but I don't know. She just wants friends. And the good thing is Sylph is coming here. Yeah, Draken. Oh. All right. Okay, I feel like Draken will realize what's going on. Like he'll be like, "Oh, Rebecca has unlocked his her power." Backup plan. Yeah, he, he'll probably realize. Oh, things are changing. Well, there you go. Okay, what now? Oh really? Alright, crash! Crash into the... Yes! Well... Yeah, sometimes it's better to just kick in... Uh, kick out the front door and get in. <laughs> Make full use of our shields. Oh, damn. Yes. Hmm. Just ignore them. Yeah, well, it's just going to repair itself, I think. Yeah, mm, yeah, don't, no need to worry about it. Wait, so are we like actually just directly going to him? Okay, like Shiki did say he has a strategy. Yeah. Um, what? 30? Okay. 
Okay, my theory is correct. This is a parallel world. Why did he say number 30? Wasn't Rebecca number 26 or 28 or 29, something like that? I forgot. What was she? 20. Uh, I don't know, whatever what she was, but she definitely wasn't 30. So, all right, so it's a parallel world. It's pretty obvious because, like I said, um, time leaping and going to the past doesn't really come. Like, you cannot really just go back to the past and take different, uh, like, you know, like, different uh, choices, make different choices and expect to stay on the same path. As soon as Rebecca came back, if she retraced her path back, she probably would have been staying in the same world. As soon as she decided to tell everyone and changed what she did, immediately it branched into a parallel world. And now that it is a parallel world, we do not know if this... W no, but... No, 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 wait, wait. Then why, why did they call number 30? If it's a parallel world and it branches from there, Rebecca's number should be the same. Okay, that doesn't make sense. All right, uh, scratch that. Um, I'm not sure if this is a parallel world. Not exactly sure. Like what I was thinking like, oh, since this is a parallel world, maybe Rebecca's number has changed here. But it doesn't make sense. If, even if this is a parallel world, it branched after Rebecca decided to change what she did. So from that point onwards, it has changed. Before that, everything should be the same. So her number should still be the same. It shouldn't really be 30. So wait. Is this, who is this number 30? Is this like someone else or is this actually Rebecca? This must be Rebecca. Then why did her number change? Like maybe I'm thinking of this too critically. But you know, in my head, at first I was like, oh, this is a parallel world. That's why her number has changed because there's a parallel world. It's not the same world. But I'm thinking, maybe I'm thinking about this too critically because in my head, what I'm thinking is that even if there's a parallel world, it branched from here onwards. So everything before this should be the same. So her number should be the same. But maybe I'm thinking about this too critically. Maybe something else is going on. Like, who knows? Because I'm definitely sure, I'm like 90% sure this is a parallel world. Because she has changed what she has done. As soon as she changes what she has done, it immediately branches off into another world. You know, that is what parallel worlds are. If we make a change, you know, we like, you know, branch off into another world. Like maybe there's a world where a lot of things doesn't happen. But in this world that we are in now, like stuff has happened. Like, like I, I remember like, you know, reading, like when I was like reading about this for the first time, like one of the most easiest example is that I have a glass of water. If it falls down from my hand and the glass breaks, there's a world that branches immediately over there, a world where I don't break the glass and a world where I break the glass. And these multiple possibilities, like, it's like a lot of worlds gets created. So the current world I am in is, is, a, reason, uh, is a result of the decisions I've made up until now. There might be another world where I've made a different reason, where I'm probably not doing YouTube. <laughs> so that is what parallel worlds are. So as soon as Rebecca changed what she did, she's not retracing her paths back. She has changed the world. She's in a parallel world. I'm, I'm like 90% sure, but let's see, let's see what this is about and wait, so this is another thing make, this makes me realize, what the hell was that dream that we saw in one of the previous episodes where um, like everything was destroyed or whatever, Shiki has grown up and uh, like Happy has died or something and where there was like a, Shiki had like a scratch like, this. what was that about? Like, this is making me realize, making me realize another thing. Like, Rebecca has to go through everything before she's able to retrace her, like, before she's able to time leap. So, she has to go through everything before time leaping, and after time leaping, she, when she's back to, like, a previous time, she thinks of everything that happened up until, like, you know, like, before, like, after the, that section, you know, like, okay, like, this is, like, a line, Rebecca is here, and she, she makes a few decisions and reaches this point where there's a dead end. And she decides to time leap, comes back here again. So everything that happened in here, she, in this position, she thinks that all of those are in a dream. So this part is a dream, but she actually went through this part before time leaping. It's not a dream. It's just something that she went through, but her consciousness came back again. That's why she's seeing everything that she has done as a dream. So what's up with that dream that she had where the whole world was destroyed or whatever? Like, like I said, Shiki was like an adult. She was an adult and uh, something crazy was going on. 
What was that? Did she actually go through all of that and then time leaped back? And is that why she saw everything as a dream? Like, there's a lot of questions I'm having now. You know, like, yeah, like, these aren't prophetic dreams. It's not a prophetic dream. These are the things that she went through and she time leaped back, and that's why she's thinking of them as prophetic dreams. But she actually went through all of this. That would also mean that the previous dream she had, she must have went through all of that before time leaping back. And now she's thinking that that was a dream, but she, that actually wasn't a dream. She actually time leaped from there to here. But then why does she have not, not have the memories of, of the time that she... Yeah, she doesn't have any memories. That's the only thing she remembers. Why? I don't know. It's a lot of questions I'm having. But let's, let's wait for it. Let's, let's, let's see what, what happens and how this goes. Because yeah, like maybe maybe it's because this time that the, the distance is quite like you know little. She didn't really go that much into the future, and she timely. That's why maybe she remembers everything. Maybe the previous dream she that she had that was like a long time. I'm definitely sure. And uh, Shiki was like a grown adult or something. Like it definitely was like a few years. So maybe it's because it's a long time, and she timely. She doesn't really remember what happened. Maybe the, the final section she only remembers bits and pieces of it. That's why she can only remember the final scene. And everything else she doesn't remember. Or something like that, I don't know. Anyways, let me stop thinking about this. I'm sure they'll gradually give us the answers. Okay. So, in this episode, we begin with... Uh, seeing what's happening. Excuse me. Uh, seven days has gone after Shiki died and... You know, like every in the news outlets, every places they're like, oh, Sibyl has died, you know, like um, stuff, all those news are coming out. Happy and Pino are in the junk shop while Rebecca is in her room just sitting down, like just, you know, like lonely, sad and yeah. So she's thinking what she should do, like she, she's dead, that is, you know, like that's still haunting her and she's remembering, thinking of what her other friends are up to. And I'm, I don't know, I'm sure they were like, like, very bad things happened to them from that, that point onwards. But either way, uh, Laguna comes in and she, he sees, uh, like as soon as she sees Laguna, she gets freaked out. Because obviously, like, like she's, he's related to Draken Joe. And Draken Joe is, you know, like, has, like as, as she says, like, it has gone through such a point that he, she doesn't really feel hatred for Draken Joe. It has went past that. She's actually fearful of him. And uh, Laguna comes in and Laguna says, oh, you should eat this and that. And like, I, like I said, like, you know, I, I, I do know that he is the most empathetic out of everyone. You know, he's probably the most kindest and she's, he's probably the only one who has like different motivations or something like, you know, like something about him. But still, like, like everything that she said, he said kind of pissed me off because he was acting as if like, oh, we're making like, you know, we're, we're doing a favor for you. That type of attitude he was having. Like, yeah, I understand. He was, she was, he was doing that to kind of make Rebecca eat and, you know, like, kind of keep herself healthy. And, uh, like, so that she can come out of that state. Still, it did piss me off because, like, what the hell are you saying? Like, you're the, you guys are the one to, ones who are responsible for this. But, yeah, he is the most empathetic one. And, uh, yeah, like, that's why I was angry at him. The others I hate. I, I want them to just, you know, just... Yeah, like especially that guy, that Daiti, whatever. He's the he's the worst one. You know, Fai is kind of uh, yeah annoying as well. Uh, like Fai's yeah, but but maybe he's he kind of reminds me of Natsu a little bit. So maybe he's like a, just a hot but blooded passionate person without any morality. That type of character maybe he is. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, um, and obviously like a Daiti, I hate Daiti the most. And uh, the, like Sylph is, I'm fine with Sylph. Sylph is okay because I guess like there's something probably like you know as as Jin said, she she's suffering from some kind of disease. I'm guessing or something like that. And that's why they probably Draken just said something like, "Oh, I'm going to heal you" or something like that. And that's why Jin and uh, Sylph, both of them are actually working for them. And uh, I don't, I I'm sure it's something like that. So yeah, uh, turns out the only person I hate out of all of them is uh, Daichi and Draken Joe. These two I cannot really stand. I I hate them. And uh, for the love of God, I really don't want this going in a direction where in the end, she keeps like, oh, Draken Joe, I've defeated you. 
let's be friends. I don't want that. Please don't let, let it go in that direction. I hate this guy. I don't know. I don't care whatever backstory he has. Maybe it's like one of the most crappiest, saddest, and just one of the most like sorrowful backstory that Dragon Joe has. I don't care. I don't like him. Whatever he did here in this from that point onwards, you know, like, yeah, he he needs to be dealt with. That's the type of character he is. I don't want Shiki making friends with him. Nope. Definitely not. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe that's how it's going to go. <laughs> Still. <laughs> I don't like him. That's it. And I don't think my, my decision will change from here onwards. We'll see. Anyways, uh, yeah, Laguna is like, yeah, like just freshen up, you know. Like, you, you should take a shower and he's like, oh, this room has surveillance cameras, but not in the bathroom. We're not that degraded. Yeah, you're, you're not that degraded. Wow. <laughs> Didn't know that. Okay, great. Like, this has killed everyone in, in Rebecca's stream and Laguna is saying, we aren't that degraded that we're going to put cameras in the shower. Wow, 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 wow. What a nice gesture, you know? Like, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Jack and Joe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyways. Uh, so, Rebecca then goes to the, like, you know, uh, the, the bathroom and like has a shower. And she's like, yeah, Laguna's probably the, the, the most, like, you know, the, the better one out of all of them. Uh, he's probably a, a not that bad of a guy, but still, you know, like he, like she, she's, she's not really comfortable with any of this. And she's thinking like, what's going on? Why is this happening? And she, I, I like how she little by little starts thinking like, I think it's seven days past. Like uh, for these seven days, she's probably in shock. But here she realizes now that this really cannot go on. So she's thinking like, what's going on? Why, wh why, what does she, he want out of me? <clears throat> he definitely wants my power. And here we get a little bit of context, you know, what happened from after Shiki's death from that point onwards. Um, and uh, Drakenjo kind of says here, we can see. Uh, okay, a device that extracts ether power. The petrification ray that Illega from Gills had was his power, which kind of makes sense because he can petrify people with his alchemist power. And that was something that that guy from Illega also had. And she, he's told Rebecca that I want to use that device to extract your power. You know what I feel is the most dumbest decision, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dragon Joe has taken here. One of the most dumbest decision is that he told everything to Rebecca. Like what else do you expect? After she realizes her power, she's just going to time leap. Like, I feel like from his standpoint, from like, you know, like if, if you're like, if you're like, if I was actually like, you know, a Dragon Joe, which I definitely wouldn't be. <laughs> Still, if in his shoes, what I would have done is kept her in like, you know, like kept her in, um, da in the dark. Don't, won't tell her what's going on. And as soon as we realize that her, but I guess at the same time, unless and until she realizes what her power is, she won't be able to unlock it. So it'll always be a stalemate. I can see, okay, okay, you know what? Maybe Drakenjo had no choice. He had to tell her, otherwise she wouldn't realize what her power is and that would be it. She wouldn't even unlock her power. Maybe that's why he told her, probably very unwillingly because yeah, as soon as he told her, he gave her multiple options to run away because her power is a crazy one, you know? She doesn't need to like actually run away from here. She can just time leap. That's it. Bam. In matters of seconds. So telling her was like a double-edged sword. Unless and until he tells her, you know, uh, she won't really understand what her power is and won't, won't ever unlock it. But now that she, he has told her, there's like a 90% possibility of her running away by time leaping. So it was probably something like that. That's why they were like, the whole security was like very tough and everything. Like, okay. So yeah, he, he, he tell, told her what her power is. Cat Leaper, it isn't really high speed or something like that. It has the power to change the laws of the cosmos. Okay, one thing, he, interesting thing that he, like not interesting, but one uh, witty thing he did here is that she, he didn't really tell her what her power does. He just told her that, oh, it's called Cat Leaper, that's it. Your power is something different. 
And you know, like if he actually told Rebecca what his her power does, she probably would have immediately unlocked it. And like you know, like she'll realize what her power is, and she probably could have in- immediately uh, unlocked it, and just immediately she would have left. So I think Dragon Joe deliberately kept her in, uh, like in the dark, so that she doesn't really run away. But still, it didn't work because Rebecca gradually re- realized what it is, and she just leaped. Yeah, like she's now in the, the bathroom, and she's thinking like, uh, oh, my Aether Gear's name is Cat Leaper. Change the laws of the cosmos. Like this little hints she he's kind of sprinkled. So she's trying to make everything like makes more sense and like connecting the dots. And she's like, oh, what does that mean? There you go. He says, I cannot really tell you that because it'll take. Oh, there you go. He himself said it. It'll put me a disadvantage if you use that power. Yeah, he. I. F- I feel like he. Pr- he probably didn't even want to tell her the power's name and what it is. But unless and until he does that, Rebecca would never realize what it is. So he had to take that risk. And yeah, you know, like that risky, like step that he took actually backfired. <laughs> Rebecca leaped, leaped and ran away. And yeah, she's thinking like in that case, I need to hurry up and realize what it is. Dragon just says, now here on it gets complicated, you haven't awakened the power yet, unless and until you do that, we cannot really extract it, so we need to make you realize what your power is before extracting it. Yeah. And he says, like, as soon as you realize your power, we will immediately un- like, understand what it is, like, that you have realized, and it will, will stop you. So, here's the thing. I still don't see how he could have stopped her. Like, she can time leap. Even if he realized that she has understood her power, how can you stop someone who time leaps? You know, like, before extra, like, he needs a little bit, at least like a few seconds to take out the device that is used to extract it and go to Rebecca. And even if he's like in the in front of Rebecca, when Rebecca, like, let's take this situation. Like Rebecca standing here, Dragon Joe is standing here. You know, Rebecca realizes what her power is, unlocks her power. The little amount of time that it'll take for Dragon Joe to take out the device and extract it will be enough for Rebecca just time leave. So I don't see how he was planning to, like extract it before she time leaves because this is a time leap ability she can literally stop time then and there you know and just time leap as soon as she realizes what her power is yeah one thing it could have happened is that she realized she awakened her power but she didn't know how to use it within that little time frame if Drakenjo extracted it that might have worked but as soon as she awakened her power you know if she realized immediately realized what it can do and what she can do she can just run away. So I feel like that was what Drakenjo was trying to do. Like, you know, he was trying to, like, you know, like, like, as soon as it gets awakened, he was trying to probably go in and get her ability before she learns how to use it. That little time frame. He was probably planning that. He was planning to get the ability then and there. But it, it didn't work properly because Rebecca here. Okay. Draken call me number 29. There you go. Number 20, he was number, she was number 29, so the next one is number 30. So now in this, this, the next part, where in the ending scene, we see that she's called number 30. So this is a different world. But I, I don't understand, why did the model number change? Because if it is a parallel world, what happened from that point onwards has changed. Not before it, before it is everything is the same. So he, she still should be number 29, shouldn't she? Why is she number 30? I have no idea. Unless and until this is a completely different world that she's leaped in. You know, this is not the same. Okay, you know what? Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe this is a completely different parallel world. Like a parallel world where, like, like the, the branching point, maybe, maybe the branching point is from where she was, like, I don't exactly know why she's called 29. Like, she, like they said, like, maybe she's like a, like, it seems as if she's like, it's like a model number, like 2930. So, like, what I was saying is like, oh, if this is a parallel world and the parallel world branches from that point, you know, that point where Rebecca was in the shower, not shower, sorry, uh, where Rebecca was like unconscious, you know, 
and she gets up and she tells everyone, oh, this is what I saw. This is a prophetic dream kind of thing. And, and I think this is what's going to happen, you know. And they start taking countermeasures. Unless and until the, the branch point is from there, you know, if the branch point is from there, before that, everything should be the same. She should still be number 29. But if the branch point was from some far way before, from where she was called number 29, if it is from there, the branch point, maybe that's what's going on. Maybe she didn't really leap to like a branch point. She leaped, leapt to a completely different parallel world, like a parallel world where she's number 30. You know, not from the recent branch, you know, you know, like if it was from a recent branch, then she should still be number 29. She's number 30. Why? Because she left into a completely different parallel world where the branch point was from way before. That type of thing. And maybe everything went, still went the same way. You know, not much changes has happened in the parallel world. The only change is that she's number 30 here. Maybe that's what's going on. I don't know, this is time and space we're talking about, anything could happen, you know, like you can find multiple reasonings for what is happening, because this is time and space, this is like, this is something like that can change, and uh, you know, like any, any kind of explanation I can come up with, so I feel like that's what's going on here, the branch wasn't recent, that's why she's not 29, the branch was from way before, and that, in this parallel world, the only thing that has changed is she's number 30. And everything else probably went the same. That's what I think. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, Rebecca realizes what's going on. She's like, something must happen. Uh, it sounds like I'm a model number from an old robot. And she's like crying. She, you can see that her emotions kind of come out. And you can see that uh, this probably heightened her ability to, like, you know, make the power come out. And this was what Drakenju was trying to do, I think, over there, like, you know, by killing Shiki in front of her. But it happened here in the bathroom when she was taking a shower. So I guess I have to thank Laguna for that, because unless until he came in and told her to get a shower, she probably wouldn't have done it, and this wouldn't have happened. But anyways, she, like, you know, thinks of everyone, and in the end, she thinks about Shiki, starts crying, and damn, and bam, the ether gear starts working. And as soon as it works, she stops the time, and you can see that Rakanjo re immediately realizes what's going on, and she's, he's like, oh no, we have to stop her. And then, before he's able to stop her, Rebecca realizes what to do. She's like, oh, this is Cat Leaper. Now, interesting name, like I said, Cat Leaper. It reminds me of Schrodinger's cat. I do wonder if that, it has something to do with Schrodinger's cat, because... Mm, I guess if you think about it like that, Schrodinger's cat does have to do a lot of things with parallel worlds, you know. Schrodinger's cat, uh, a box, there's a 50% chance of a poison uh, entering the box and a 50% chance of the poison not entering the box, that kind of thing. Right? So a cat is put inside the box, it's kept close and you're told whether the cat is alive or dead. So you don't know what happened, you know, the cat uh, might be alive if the 50% chance of the poison vial breaking and like you know like affecting the cat it, it could have died or 50% chance the poison vial didn't break and the cat is alive so 50 50 you don't know what it is so if you answer the question ask the question is the cat dead or alive what are you going to answer you know the answer is it's both alive and dead unless and until you open the box and see what is going on unless and until the future is observed the possibility of anything happening is like is superimposed on like you know one on top of the other that type of thing so basically the fact that we don't really uh, like like an unknown planet like let's take a planet a you know we don't know if planet a exists or not because we haven't really observed it so there's a possibility of planet a existing somewhere in the cosmos and at the same time there's also possibility of it doesn't isn't it not existing so we are here, unless and until we observe it and uh, make sure that, oh, planet A exists, it exists and doesn't exist at the same time. So when we observe something, what happens is it branches. The, the world branches, you know. For the cat, as soon as I open the box, if I see the cat is alive, you know, then that's one, one path. 
In another path, maybe when I open the box, that cat isn't alive. So immediately it branches into two. In one path, the cat is alive, and the one path, the cat isn't alive. That's why it's called the Schrodinger's cat. Here, this is what I know at least. Like I might be wrong, though. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> this is what it is. So unless or until the future, uh, uh, like s s an object is observed, it exists and doesn't exist at the same time. When we observe it, one of the options come true, and that is what the truth is. So that is what Schrodinger's cat in, and this is what makes parallel worlds and stuff. So I can understand. Uh, why this is called the cat's leap because I guess what Rebecca is doing is leaping back in time and making different parallel worlds which is why it's called cat's leap I guess leaper I think cat leaper I don't know maybe that, that's what I think that's why it's called cat leaper because Schrodinger's cat and all that anyways I might be wrong though this is just a guess so she just jumps back and leaves back and she like wakes up and she's like oh like thank god that was a dream and like a, you know like a sister and everyone is there i really love how she immediately realized what's going on and she takes the step for it because oh my god when this happened i was getting <coughs> steins gate vibes like spoiler alert if you haven't seen steins gate um in steins gate it takes multiple times for okabe rintaro to understand what the hell is going on like after he, like, like, it takes at least for him, for him to leap three to four times before he realizes what the hell is happening and he realizes what he should do. And all those four times, four to five times, he tries multiple ways to defy fate, but he cannot. So he has to go through the pain multiple times, you know, before him actually realizes what is going on. And then he starts trying to actively change it. I was thinking that's what's going to happen here. Rebecca is going to go through the same fate multiple times, suffering multiple times. And then she would realize what's going on, and then she would take the steps. Thank God that didn't happen. I don't want to see any more suffering. Good Lord. <laughs> One time was enough. So, <laughs> or, or who knows? Maybe this happened multiple times. We don't actually know. Maybe this is the fifth time Rebecca's doing this. Like, who knows? Like, <laughs> like we, we don't know. <laughs> Maybe they just showed us only one time. By the way, uh, Rebecca, like, realizes what's going on. Like, at first she was like, oh, this is a dream. But then she's like, wait a minute, where's Shiki and all of them? And... Then she realizes, like, oh no, everything's happening just as the dream went. So she's like, maybe, maybe this is not a prophetic dream. Uh, no, sorry, she thinks that maybe this is like a prophetic dream, like something that I saw and like was going on, and you know, maybe this is all come true. So, you know, like she makes a proper judgment here. She's like immediately called Shiki because they were still in the in the deck, a dock. So she's like immediately called them and she contacts them, and. Uh, She's like, stop, guys, I need to tell you something. And uh, just, just stop, don't go. And uh, he says that, mm, where's that part? Please listen to me properly. And then they sit down and like, as you can see, future has changed from this point onwards. As soon as Rebecca contacted Shiki, the future has started changing because there's a different decision than what she took in the previous. So. Like, either the parallel world branched from here, or maybe this is another parallel world. Like I said, I, I, my guess is, like, this is another parallel world where the branch has happened for a long, from a long time before, because she's number 30 here. But everything went very similar to what happened in this world. Like, you know, not much change has happened. The only change is that she's number 50, 30 over in this world. Unlike the other world where she was number 29. Everything has probably went through the same way. So nothing really changed that much, but from here on, once the branch starts happening properly, you know, like it actually, the, the, the future actually changes from here, something like that, I think, at least. Uh, so she tells that, okay, like everything was super real, this and that, these, all of these things happen. She tells that everyone like, like goes through a horrible time and she is dead in the future. So I would say at the beginning, they're like, oh, is this really like, it's, like it's, a, it's, a, it's a dream, isn't it? You know, like they're not really kind of believing her, but she's like, no, I know exactly what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, the fact that Hermit kind of backed her up here kind of helped everyone properly understand and believe because Hermit is like the one who knows more about this. So if she tells something like that, she's like, oh, yeah, you know what? Rebecca might be right. If she tells something like that, everyone will believe them even more. Because Hermit is an actual, like a, like, a, like a genius, that type of person. So, she says that if Rebecca, no, wait, just a minute, let me go back a little bit more. 
Okay, which says, was it a precognitive dream? And Hermit says, such a thing hasn't been scientifically proven yet. Um, but if Rebecca has turned back time, this may make, make all this may make all sense. And you know, there you go. As soon as Hermit says that, everyone's like, oh no. You know, because she's a certified <laughs> person like who knows about all of this. So Okay, so he she says when we were on Sanjo, yeah, she tells her that your ether gear awakened, it wasn't really something to do with speed, it's something to do with time. Maybe you Yeah. Maybe you have left through time. Okay. Alright, so which says, now that you mention it, uh, while Rebecca was unconscious, a slight change in her ether was detected. There you go, that's more than enough proof. Because she knows how to do it now, kind of. In other words, Rebecca's consciousness in the future overrode her consciousness at this moment. So this makes it even more, like, you know, like, under, uh, you know, like, even more creditable, you know, her, her explanation. Everyone's like, okay, this is the actual deal. Okay. So, now, I think, like, Hermit says something here. Where's that part? Alright. Hermit says, like, it's like a personal chromophage. Chronophage. The only change is the chronophage turns back times of the entire planet, and their targets aren't aware of it, they can't keep the memories, uh, but for uh, Rebecca, Rebecca's time leap only puts herself back in time, there's a high possibility that she has her memory intact. There you go, so it's proved that maybe what happened was actually in the future. And Hermit is like, there's a possibility, theoretically with chronophage, outsiders can observe the time changes. Outsiders can tell that Norma went back 50 years and so forth. But with Rebecca's time leap, no one can observe the change. Yeah, makes sense. Except Rebecca herself. Because, yeah, like, like, no one will be able to understand it because she's literally leaping through her time. Her consciousness is going back to the past. So everyone who's over there at that point hasn't really gone through to the future. That's why. They don't know what's going on. Makes sense. Okay. And it's very hard to prove. And Happy like, is there any kind of thing that you've seen from the future where we can make sure that everything is going as we envision it to be? And she says like, oh, Labilia, you know, like I, I remember her being caught there. And he, she kind of like, you know, checks out her YouTube page and she's like, a B-Cube, sorry, page. And she's like, oh, like the last she has like, you know, like, Uploaded was like seven days ago and she calls uh, that girl as well the vtuber the vtuber girl and uh, She's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, we like haven't really seen her that much I love how they casually say that. Oh, she got demonetized <laughs> Casual like, you know <laughs> Like a change in b2 policy, you know, uh, like since she bullied her she got demonetized. Well, God what you deserved, you know uh, anyways <laughs> So, yeah, Rebecca's like, she, we haven't really been able to contact her the, in the social media, we cannot, like, you know, get her. So, yeah, everything must be true. And she says, like, what I thought was a dream might really happen in reality. And then she's like, then what should we do? Like, because, you know, like, I want to bring Labilia back. But the fact is, and she also says, like, they were actually friends before. I do wonder what happened that like this happened. Probably because of jealousy and everything for Labelia's part, you know. She probably got jealous of Rebecca or something and they start bullying her or something. I don't know. Anyways, uh, but yeah, Labelia, she's like, I want to get her back. But the fact is that Dragon J is too strong. I don't see any future where, um, you know, we can defeat him. <coughs> so they're like, what should we do? So everything we can take care of now, except Dragon Joe, we don't know what to do with about him. So Hamid is like, everything else I can take care of, you know, like, like, if we have proper countermeasures, we can stop everything from going wrong. So we won't fight fair. We have the information from the future. And then, like, we know, like, the, the three of them, like, you know, like, barge in into the Eden Zero. Those three. And Rebecca's like, alright, let him give you the information. And they give him them the information, what to do. 
So as always, the dress, you know, like uh, sister wears the dress and not sister, sorry, witch wears the dress and fights them and immediately defe defeats them. And then, yeah, Rebecca's like, don't like, you know, lower your guard. These guys are actually sneaky. Um, the girl is a space, space alien who actually takes uh, advantage of witch, uh, not witch, sorry, uh, sister, and actually, you know, like, kind of lowers her guard and attacks her, which is, <laughs> uh, sister's like, wait, what? <laughs> and then she's like, the other guy, the big guy, he can turn invincible, uh, invisible for a certain amount of time, I guess, and the other, the skeleton guy is actually like a hacker, an AI kind of thing. Who can hack in the system? So every, obviously they are all surprised. They're like, "How the hell does this girl know about know about this?" But yeah, so Hamid is like, "All right, don't worry, I'll take care of it." Yeah, this guy is a nasty piece of work, you know, the hacker guy. But if I take countermeasures, everything can be properly done. So there you go. The first step is you know, not done. We have taken care of them. No more trouble with this ship. And thankfully, this time. Uh, which, like, one of the biggest, uh, like, you know, like, thing that happened in the previous parallel world where everything went wrong is that which hermit and sister actually got, like, you know, taken care of. You know? as, soon as, as soon as we lost the support, a lot of crazy things starts going in crazy way because these guys are strong, these girls are strong, you know, uh, especially with the dress that they wore. So that was, like, one of the biggest downsides we had. So now that they're fine, like, it's going to change a lot of things. Because they'll actually be able to help us. And we've barged in into the, like, you know, the planet with the ship in its entirety. So, yeah. So, there you go. Now, Rebecca says, like, uh, Dragon Joe wants my power. And, yeah, Pino asks a few important questions. She's like, how does Dragon know about it? Obviously, from Master Noah, but then how did Master Noah know about it? You know. And uh, then she talks about the element four, you know, like give, tells them about what each and every one's power is, you know, like what it is. Uh, Daichi makes Earth incurs pain by making branches crawl through the body. Uh, self imprisons people and steals like you know, people's stuff into the wind. Um, uh, Fi is a hot-blooded sniper, you know, and uh, Laguna uses the tears to make others into water. And there's also Jin, who is a lot stronger than he was and he, she also tells Shiki that she, you might actually lose against him at which Shiki kind of pouts obviously but then <clears throat> they're like so what do we do about like you no know, Jin so obviously you know they're like she must he must have some kind of a weakness what is his weakness they remember what um oh they remember that Moscow was with him so they ask Moscow what's do you know about anything about him and Moscow says that Oh, uh, like, you know, like maybe her sister, you know, like there was, she did tell the witch, the imposter witch that, oh, you promised to cure my sister, something like that. So there must be something going on with her sister. So her sister is his, her, his weakness. So I, it's crazy. And it's kind of funny now that I think about it. As soon as she said that, uh, he said that, I was like, oh, then we can take his sister hostage. <laughs> it's kind of messed up now that I think about it. But you know, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> but then I love how here in the show they were, they're like, oh, maybe you can help her him out by curing her sister. And I'm like, all right, you know what? Yeah, that's a better plan. <laughs> I immediately thought taking the sister hostage. <laughs> like I went in a negative direction. But these guys, they were like, oh, maybe we can cure her, and that's why she he'll become our friend or something. Or at least even if he doesn't become our friends, he'll not stand in our way. And I'm like, yeah, okay, you know what? That's better. <laughs> you know, uh, oh boy. I actually thought about taking Sylph hostage. Because, like, in my head, I was like, oh, Sylph is actually coming in our direction. Because that's what was happening, you know? She was on the way to our ship. So I was like, oh, just capture her and take her hostage. <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, so there you go. Um, Rebecca's like, but still, I don't know what to do with, about Drak and Joe. It seems as if you cannot really defeat him. Like, changing anything into any kind of element. And Shiki's like, I have a plan. I don't know what his plan is. Hopefully, it's something that actually works. And then we're back to Drak and Joe. And I was thinking, like, maybe Drak and Joe will realize what's going on. Because he does know what, she, like, Rebecca's power is. It's, it's a troublesome one. So, he's like, okay, like, why is it taking so much long for them to contact us? 
and then he's like, okay, even if they get defeated, they can like, you know, like infiltrate the system. But then they realize that something else is going on. And, uh, oh, and Draken just also like gathered the element four and sent them. And uh, because I feel like something is going on, you know, something uh, like some kind of change has happened. Uh, and then they realize that the Eden Zero is actually moving direction, and actually going directly towards them. And Drakenjo gets, you know, concerned because he knows that the material of Eden Zero is way stronger than his own, like, you know, like planet's thing, the, his own ship's, like, you know, material. So Eden Zero just barges in, destroys the whole, like, you know, like the, the, the glass pane and gets in, you know. Uh, auto re automatic repair so the people are not flung out into the uh, like you know space but yeah we have infiltrated so now what we are going to do is i'm guessing we're going to directly go and confront dragon joe and dragon joe's like oh, i'm going to teach you kids a lesson you know but like i said the the best thing that has happened in this is that we actually have the power of the shining stars the three of them hermit uh, witch and uh, sister these three, we actually have them with us. So they'll help out a lot. Especially Witch, which is extremely strong. And I'm like, you know, obviously Hermit with her hacking and AI, like, you know, like that type of skills. And um, uh, Sister with her healing capabilities. So yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect addition. And very, they'll, they'll, they'll help us a lot. And since we do have the knowledge of what everyone's power is, that is also going to help us out a lot. So it, Turns out, like, if in the previous parallel world, our, like, no, our, our percentage of winning was, like, 0.1%, in this world, there's a 50% there's a chance of us winning, because we actually, we actually have all the information. Like, information is power, as they say. So, there you go. That was it. This was, this was a really good episode. Like I said, there's a lot of theories and everything that I'm thinking about. You know, first of all, the whole thing with the parallel world. And cat leaping ability, you know, like cat being Schrodinger's cat, and uh, you know, parallel world and stuff. And uh, obviously, since they time leaped, you know, uh, I do wonder in the end that part where uh, Dragon Joe was like, "Oh, uh, the only person who we shouldn't harm is number 30, which kind of uh, shows that yeah, this. Is, wait a minute, let me just let me just read that part. Uh, I'll kill all of you except number 30. There you go. Number 30. So that's what that's the only part that is kind of confusing me because the, uh, if the branch happened from I'm repeating this again because this is an important thing that I'm trying to think about is that if the branch happened from where Rebecca was unconscious from that point onwards everything has changed. Before that everything should be the same. So shouldn't she see, still be number 29? Only option that the only way I can see that she's number 30 is that the branch actually didn't happen from that point onwards. It happened from way before. From way before. And in this world, she's actually number 30. Unlike the, 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 the other world where she was number 29, where everything went wrong. But then shouldn't, if this is like a completely different branch, shouldn't stuff have happened differently than this one? You know, no, not necessarily. Maybe the only thing that has changed in that other world, the other complete other parallel world where she's number 30, is that her number. She's number 30 here. And everything else that has happened is same, completely identical to what happened in the parallel world where she's number 29. So the only thing that has changed in this parallel world is 30. Everything has went the same direction. So that is the only change that has happened there. Everything else went through the same path as as, as the world she's in, that is, she's number 29 in. And then from this point onwards, it has started branching in a way bigger way. The branch before that was very minute. The only branch that had happened is that she's number 30 here. But from here onwards, it has started going in a complete different direction than the, the world that she's number 29. Something like that. This is what I'm thinking, at least. Hopefully we get our, a proper answer and explanation. Anyways, that is it guys. Thank you for watching. This was my reaction to episode number 6 of Eden Zero uh, Season 2. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or if you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know. I'll check them out. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Eden Zero. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.